flat the cutoff with a big suited ace here. And that's going to bring Westlake in as well. Let's hit the bad beat, man. Let's do it. Yeah, that Royal against Quads somehow. Can't happen. Yeah. Uh, ace is full, though. Still wins. That's true. However, it has to be a pocket pair. Aces. Uh, oh, yeah. No, we can't do it. Just well, well, no. I one ace on the board. One ace uh, on the board and then, like, a couple of It's not going to happen this hand. Yeah. But it, it definitely is possible, possible with those two holdings. Yeah. So Super Producer Carolyn here brings up a very good point, which is... We have a bad beat jackpot going on right now, and we will get back to the information on that as Trey is getting raised by Slicer here with the ace 10 of diamonds, and Trey not worried about too much here. What hands are going to raise rather than just call Ooh. in position? Uh, nine of diamonds here on the turn. Definitely going to give Slicer reason to continue. It's a little bit of an odd line because as the pre-flop aggressor, you're definitely going to have a massive range advantage on this flop. So to get raised. Trey's still trying to play it slow. Checking it over. Yeah, certainly not many options here. You're, you're just going to check to the aggressor mm -hmm. uh, when out of position, even with a hand as strong as aces. Slicer, of course, going to continue going for it. Then no, no reason to slow down now. If you're going to put in a raise on this flop, this turn is just about as good as it gets, aside from the queen or the jack of diamonds. But 1,400 now, two-thirds sizing, and Trey now. In a little bit of an awkward spot. And yeah, so he is just going to ship it now, basically realizing that if he checks back on the river, all of the hands that he could get value from, um, like, well, the ones that he beats are mostly just going to check behind. So ship it in now and see what happens. And that is just going to get So 59,000 for the table. Split yep. amongst loser, winner, and the rest of the table. And on top of that, the another hundred dollars to every single person. Yeah, pretty fantastic promotion. And every day, that hand, the qualifying hand, gets easier and easier to hit. Obviously, still sort of challenging to have aces full of fives when you have a pocket pair, or whatever, defeated. But it's getting easier and easier, and it will continue going until that bad beat is hit. So it's just going to keep going down, down, down. Until I mean, we're going to be at aces full of deuces here before long, and I. Heard some rumblings that it may just continue on down into the king's fold. I won't be held to the fire on that, but uh, that's what I've, I've heard is perhaps in the works. So keep your ears open, your eyes glued to the TCH website for all of the updates as we've got ourselves a hand of Bruin here. 1,700 in the middle. Chaz here flopping top pair with a diamond flush draw. Slicer second pair backdoor clubs and Westlake Matt currently with the best hand. Top pair queen kicker. Better 300 here from Matt. Chaz going to go ahead and call out of position. And Slicer says, you know what? I'll peel off a turn for 300, see what develops. Three ways to a turn. It is a second club here. So Slicer will improve his equity. And all things considered, there is a very even distribution of equities here. Westlake Matt still with the best hand. And given the action, this is a spot where your opponents are very frequently going to have something like flush draws and maybe some weak combo draws that didn't feel inclined to raise given the action. So I do like the continue from Westlake Matt, and honestly, I think even a little bit larger size given the dynamics would have been sort of reasonable. However, he's setting himself up for an easy river jam as well if things sort of pan out that way. But uh, this bet does give him the flexibility of sort of seeing how things develop, but he has basically priced himself into playing this one out no matter what as well. Over to Chaz now. Still with the top pair and the nut diamond draw. See how he plays this one. This is a spot where if you call and the river bricks off, you are very unlikely to have the best hand uh, if your opponent goes all in. But you can save yourself that 3k. The other side of it is at what point now on the turn are you repping a hand that is going to be shoving for value. So I don't mind the call there at all. A lot of people would look at that and be like, oh, that's the spot to go all in. 
but I think it's just fine the way right. this has been played. Five of hearts, nothing. Yeah, Brick City Knights, that is not going to change anything. Chaz just going to hope to get to ch uh, show down and have the ace be good somehow. Checks through over to Westlake Matt, and he's got to believe that he's got the best hand here most of the time. It would be very weird for someone to have a superior hand, something only like an ace five. No, but with the heart out there, there's really not a lot of options. Ace five of spades, maybe the only thing that could have backed into a hand that is going to be better and that might check it over. Oh, you're absolutely right. He d yeah, yeah, so there's there's no way for that to happen. Westlake can go in for value, and everyone will fold. So he's going to ship that nice little pot right there. With the $25 straddle, these players playing quite deep still. This is a five bet or just a flat? Um, the issue here for Trey is that he's going to be playing this one out of position. If you're on the button playing this one in position, you can flat down, you know, aces, kings, even queens, and just sort of play in position and keep your opponent's weaker hands in their range. However, here Trey is going to benefit more yeah. from getting a chance to fold something like an ace-jack offsuit um, where playing out of position against a hand that is still going to be able to, uh, you know, maintain a sizable piece of equity against you. It's better to just sort of end the hand there if you can. But uh, he is going to go for the five bet. And Chaz is going to pile it in. Yep. And the fact that Trey has not snap called goes to show how much these players respect each other and their five bet jamming range. Six bet jamming range, right, mm -hmm. from Chaz here? That deep, I mean, it's it's got to be narrow, you know? Do that as uh, we just have aces and kings up against each other right now. No use speculating about what these players would do with other hands. And Trey here, 4K to call. Yeah, you don't go folding kings free very often. Going to turn him over and find out the bad news. And Trey going to need to find the case king. I think it was the case king. Oh, or his diamonds are a live. Diamond. Diamonds was the only suit that he could hit. It Ooh. didn't come. Only ran it once. Safe run out here for Chaz as he was in pretty much the most dangerous scenario that could have occurred. Trey flopping three diamonds with the king of diamonds. Chaz, no ace of diamonds. But Trey is going to get wrecked on that one. A full double here for Chaz. Going to take him up to 15-5 and Trey... After a good, strong, early start, going to get chopped down. All right, Beautiful. Boots, boots getting squeezy here out of the small blind. Jay Wynn going to open his button, ace queen off. Three bet up to 250. Another queen has hit the muck as Trey going to release the queen Dewey. Back over to Jay Wynn here, and button open, small blind, three bet, ace queen off. Going to be good enough for a four bet sometimes. Also pretty easy to play as a flat in position. Let's see how Jay Wynn attacks this one. Boots is the effective stack, 3,700. Jay Wynn just going to go for the call. Ace high board here, bet a 200 from Boots, so just getting caught up on the action there. We did see the 200 out there from Boots. Was a little bit curious as to what we were missing, but there we go, bet and a call. Nine ball corner pocket here on the turn. Boots has squad douche. Jay Wynn's feeling pretty comfortable with that. I imagine. But Boots says, you know what? I have all the aces and you have some hearts and some under pairs that are going to give up now if sure. I continue betting. So let's give it a shot. Jay Wynn, of course, has a hand that he is not folding. Yeah. And it's going to be happy to let his opponent continue betting. Danny Lebron is 50 years old. 440 here. I think a raise is a bad idea. So let's see if Jay Wynn just goes for the smooth. He did sort of ponder, I think, just sort of maybe just going through ranges and sort of trying to, to parse out what his opponent could have and what might bet the river, etc. Uh, does come to the conclusion that a call is going to be best. And while the five of hearts does bring in the front door heart flush draw, Jay Wynn with the queen of hearts is going to feel pretty confident about calling, I would say, any reasonable wager. Yeah, Boots, Boots only having 3K behind, I think. Uh, I mean, hot is 18. 
Yeah, boots, There's I think, no amount that Jay Wynn's holding to. I don't yeah. think. He might hem and haw about it, but. Boots going to go for it, though, he says. I didn't come this far to shut it down. Right. And I'm going to bet 1,400. And, uh, yeah, I think this size is just not going to get the job done. I think, I mean, if Boots goes all in, I think Jay Wynn actually is going to have more to think about. But still would probably settle on a call. But I suppose that this size does look valuey, more valuey than a jam. Right, whereas the jam is going to be very polar of just like flushes and maybe aces full, maybe even like an ace three of uh, diamonds or something like that. Mm -hmm. But as it stands, I think Jay Wynn's hand is just far too good to fold, to even contemplate folding, but he is going to do the due diligence. What? And wow. somehow Boots release this through. hand. That and was unexpected. Very unexpected. But they opened a temporary location. I think Jay Wynn must have leveled himself there in some strange way because having the Queen of Hearts is the nuts for you. And I mean, we always like to see that too. Like big pots are always exciting. And when you see the big coolers, the aces versus kings or something like that go down, it is exciting to watch. But yeah, I think to the, to the players in particular that are excited about developing their knowledge and paying attention to the intricacies, the little bits of like, what about the bet sizing? Well, it's like a storyline. You're watching a story play out. Mm -hmm. um, and if the storyline is just madness and chaos. Uh, Some people just like to watch the world burn. But you're absolutely right. I don't know. I just had to throw that movie quote in there. I, I, I feel you. I get it. <laughs> Chaz, it. Chaz has an over pair. He's got tens. Uh, and you know he's just calling Trey's bet, and Trey just turned two pair. That's better than one pair. Yeah, and this is going to be tricky for Big Daddy Chess because Trey donking this flop isn't going to have a ton of queens, right? Yeah. So the queen shouldn't be a very scary card. If he did have a queen, it would probably be the queen of spades, and it would probably be paired with a jack or a ten of spades. Yeah. So Big Daddy Chaz not having the ten of spades going to lend maybe a little bit more credibility towards that, but he's certainly going to have to pay off at least this turn bet. Mm. And reevaluate on the river. Pot has swelled 3.2K in the middle. Pretty meaningless seven of clubs. Yeah. Not going to bring home any of the draws. 10, 8, 12. Nope, that's not. That's really so, yeah, Big Daddy Chaz is going to have a pretty <laughs> tricky decision here on the end. Trey should be going for full value. Front door spades missed. And if his donking range is balanced, it should be including some front door spade draws. I'd like to see something very near to three quarter pot, not full pot. So Generally, it is going to consist of some made hands like these, like mm -hmm. top pair, vulnerable. That don't want to see more overcards peel right, off, right? Uh, and that if they can just get their Bottom opponent to pull pair, an ace something king like or an that. Ace like if you had four deuce here on that board, sure. And then other things like you know, like a seven six of spades or uh, five six of spades or you know some hands like that some that would rather not go for things. the check risk. Sure. I, in terms of like our bottom line, our hourly no, as kidding. players, but. Uh, um, I think no, it's, it's great fantastic. for the game. Great for the game. 100 great for the game. Great for the fantastic. Game. Trey's got aces. He opened, got flat called by Eric and Matt. Eric's got the flush drop. Matt flopped a set. This is going to get spicy. Yeah. Eric never folding. Matt also never folding. In fact, not only not folding, but now is the time to go for yep, the three bet. We have a check raise here from Eric and Matt with the bottom set cannot afford to allow another card to peel off for free. Yeah. Eric, the effective stack here, 3,600 behind, but does have to raise the 600 in front of him. Matt here now has to decide what the appropriate sizing is, and Trey may actually find himself in a position to fold, but let's see if Matt makes the size, what size is conducive to him. I I'm going to say 2K. No. I like this, actually. I was going to say 1,800 or a little bit oh, uh, less. He's going to go for the 1,550. 
the reason for this is that he doesn't want to price Trey out, and he wants to give Eric a rejam spot to where he can then reopen again. So there's a perfect sizing from right. that. Well, he could have... No, I guess he can't go much bigger than that. And have Eric's action. This is really an awkward spot for Trey. Having the yeah. ace of spades is actually going to put him probably in the tank for a little while here. If he doesn't have the ace of spades, I think he can just pile it in safely, covering both of his opponents, and just be like, somebody's on a spade draw, somebody might have a king, I don't know exactly that w how things are working out, but like, let's go for it. He may still end up making this play. Calls. He's certainly going for the call, and now, wow, Eric. I mean, he's, yeah, okay. he's so priced I was going to say, gonna I was gonna say Jammer, I, I mean, can you just call there, I guess? I think he's getting the price to peel one off. However, putting that much of your stack in, yeah, it, I understand it. I definitely understand it. Matt going to fill up here on the turn, though. Deuce is full of sixes. Trey may feel like However, he could saw we saw a run out where, um, you know, you think you need to hit your case ace or hit an ace, and uh, a six would also get Trey there. It would. Trey here going to feel a lot better about a set of sixes not being in Matt's range because there's only one combination of that now. So he loses to deuces and Kings. the very random king six of diamonds, Never king six there, of clubs. Yeah. And those just probably don't have I mean, Matt did call from the straddle position pre. So like the king six suited does exist. And Trey going to go big. He says, you know what? I'm going to get my value. If I Matt wish there was a way that this could run out the uh, Babby, but it's not possible. It is not possible. Deuce is full of aces would be the best hand made for Trey. Uh, that would like, lose to uh, Matt's hand. Matt. Of course, not going anywhere. This is a hand far too strong to ever contemplate folding. This is for all of his chips, uh, effectively. I mean, when he Close. goes all in for yeah. the remaining 1,300, it is not going to matter for Trey. <gasps> Wait a minute. Is this real oh life? Oh, my goodness. Is this real life? Wow. I oh, Matt. am that baffled. Is, I am so surprised. I guess he puts him on kings and only kings there. Kings and only kings. That's it. Man, when this uh, 